Hello and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today is fun because I am looking at you like this, which is not how I usually look. And that is because I am following a tutorial from a creator that I found on Instagram. She is an incredibly talented artist um, and she does lots of different things. But the thing that I found her uh, most compelling was for this style of makeup tutorial that she does where she takes a particularly niche topic or a very, very, very niche aesthetic on the internet and she encapsulates some of the most um, recognizable features of that niche and then turns it into a makeup look but it's not a makeup look in the sense that you and I would consider a makeup look. It's more editorial, it's very very evocative, lots of them are slightly imperfect and are missing lots of steps in the makeup routine but the end result is always so satisfying. I think her stuff is just like so great and inspiring so here today is my recreation of her soft grunge college kid look and I just wanted to have fun, use some stuff from my stash, really get some love in on my products so if you're interested keep on watching we're getting into it right now let's do a full face of nothing new i'm really excited to get into this i feel like you know we're reaching the season at least in my life where i'm wanting to kind of just like use what i have love what i have i've left sephora so you know what i got is what i got and i'm back to like a normal spending schedule actually i'm reducing the amount that i'm spending i'm still doing the depth year um and more importantly i have no money because i am a freelancer now which means that every penny that i get is going right back into my business and there's no second job to fund uh the pleasure spending so we are going to be a little bit more careful and judicious with how we spend our money and everything so i figured that um you know it's fun to do Full face of nothing new. I watched Anjelica Nikvist's video on the algorithm and how a lot of people are constantly complaining that they hate seeing new stuff, they hate seeing reviews, but at the end of the day, um, you know, that is like what's being pushed on social media content, you know, on the algorithm and stuff. And she laid down the law. You know, if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend it. I'll link it in the description box if I can remember. Um, but Anjelica, yeah, she really was just like, you know, if you're getting recommendations for new stuff, it's not because you know, we as creators like new stuff or, you know, YouTube has some kind of capitalist agenda. I mean, they do, but the agenda is really just to keep you on the site for longer. So it's just going to show you what you're clicking on um, and to an extent what is popular, but like only to the extent that it is, you know, feasible for you to also enjoy. And so she talked a lot about how she has not been very interested in makeup content lately because a lot of the makeup content that is out there is very... I don't know, recycled. It's all about like the new stuff, the new hamster wheel, but nothing is really technically um, interesting. And I thought that was so, yeah, realistic. It was a very realistic take, but I guess because I see Andrea as like this big figure in the community, I wouldn't expect her to act the same way I would do. Um, but yeah, today I had a very specific thing that I wanted to talk about, which is niche, niche, niche beauty looks. Um, I followed this creator and I'm obsessed with her. I feel like she does these like really intriguing um, concepts, which is she takes a very specific internet aesthetic and then turns it into like a look. It's very intriguing. I love it. I love the concept. <sighs> Let me see if I can find any actual footage of this because it's very possible that I never saved it. Oh, I found it. Her name is Zoe Kim Keneally. Keneally. Um, she's very, very cool. So she does, um, this is her Instagram page. I'm sure I'll show you like on my actual thingy. But she does these like hyper, hyper niche videos that are very, very intense. Um, I think they're quite interesting because they're quite short. Um, but the makeup is never what you think it's going to end up looking like. It's more like an, 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 an evocative look than it is much of anything else. But the first thing that she talks about is called a semi-grunge makeup tutorial. And the finished result looks like this. It's very undone, kind of messy. I really like how it looks cute but nothing like over the top so i'm gonna try to collect it she says can you do a video for casual semi goth slash grunge college student that has to wear concealer over their rosacea otherwise they look like a blank my grunge casual bead that you can wear to college so let's get into it okay so she started with gray contour oh my god it's so fast how am i supposed to follow this all right so she says i just wear concealer so i'm assuming she's doing like a light look before we start of course gotta have my hourglass lip oil and i feel like the same people who say the beauty community is dead are not really looking for where the beauty community is thriving and um, personally as someone who really likes the beauty community in long-form content I do understand the frustration with not being able to find this content where I would like to see it which is on YouTube I am primarily someone who watches content passively while working I can't be on my phone scrolling because actually that's quite an active effort I know some people say like oh I just sit on the phone and I have like scrolling paralysis I, I literally don't have the time to like afford to scroll because that 
literally does require you to have the ability to sit down and do that. And so for me, um, my passive activity, my passive version of sitting and scrolling is on social media, but on something like YouTube or, you know, any other like Skillshare or whatever, where like I can just like press start and I can actively put it on uh, a playlist and it just like runs. And if I feel the need to it, I'll come back on mobile and comment. Uh, you know, or check out the comments. But for the most part, I'm not actually scrolling. And I do feel like it's frustrating to know that that kind of content... Ooh, picked out a dandruff flake. I'm human, guys. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, it just feels a little bit frustrating sometimes that the kind of artistic, I don't know if you want to call it like creatively flourished content, that kind of thing is not really as popular as first impressions, reviews, sales, that kind of thing. You know, at the end of the day, that is what YouTube has. And I'm trying to be more creative because it's not necessarily what I appreciate um, on social media. Like, I'm not always wanting to know what's new because, frankly, I don't care about what's new and I'm not going to care about what's new because I'm going to be working from home. It's just, like, the last thing on my mind. I am going to go in with another layer of foundation just because the girl in this video, her base is, like, so flawless. Um, and she's just like going with a, a contour and I'm like, sis, I cannot skip the other steps. I'm just like not there yet. So I'm going in with the House Labs foundation. It is darker than my skin tone, but again, because the light is just shining on my face here. Let me just like white balance you guys. Like because it's so... <laughs> Do you see how my face color completely changes? But because the light is just shining here, it always makes me look super pale. And today is the day that I'm just on camera. Um, I have some content to film for Instagram because, you know, as a business owner, you can't just be a business owner. You have to also make content. So I want to make sure that even though in person it looks a little bit darker and like sunburnt, I would rather look darker and sunburnt in person because now I'm not leaving my house. So it actually is important for me to do this. I'm finding that getting dressed up to do social media is helping a little bit. Like, I love makeup, but I feel like it is kind of a waste if no one's going to see it besides me. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's a vestige of, like, economic poverty mindset or something. Um, but I am trying to get into finding excuses for me to, like, enjoy what I do without beating myself up. You know, normally I would have been like, look at you, now you really only do makeup for other people's approval. Sorry, I live on the Hudson. It's just noisy. There's lots of ferries cruise ships and like noise also carries across the water so you'll hear an echo and then it just like keeps going and I'm like oh my god all right so Zoe has told us to start with contour I've chosen two very very pale shades here to contour with this one is from the Natasha they're both from the Natasha Denona glam palette but this one is called transition and this one is called crease I know those are very very big names but in terms of pigment I always forget that Natasha Denona colors are actually quite pigmented so I'm going to start with the lighter color and then we'll go from there she seems to just hollow out her cheekbones a tiny bit like it's nothing crazy but the problem with reels is that like you can't scrub so we'll just have to watch this video over and over and over again so I keep missing it okay great contour messy metals okay so great contour she just kind of like hits oh my god it's so fast it's too fast great contour is that good am I doing it it feels it feels pretty cool but it also looks very gray is that too gray I'm also going to contour where I see natural contour, which is right here, here, around my nose. Like vaguely, vaguely. Nothing intense. I'm trying to work like a makeup artist, that is to say, in invisible layers. I don't want anything to look like discernible, really. The next step is messy metals. I know this because I watched the video 50 times. I'm going to go into a champagne rose gold. Again, the color that I'm using is not important. I'm really trying to just like tune into the vibe here. I'm realizing now this might not be dark enough. All right, let's do this on the other eye. And she calls this color inner corner. It's too dark for me to put on the inner corner, but it's also not dark enough to be on the lid. So I think I'm going to choose Serenity from the um, My Dream palette. It's like the same kind of color, but like one notch darker. And she says messy. So I'm really just going to like scrub it all over. And I'm using a finger just like her. Blends it. I don't even know if she's using a finger or a brush to blend after the fact I'm just gonna use my brush the prompt is grunge so I'm gonna do grunge you know what I mean I'm gonna do what she's doing oh did you guys watch Hannah Louise Poston's video on being like 
invited to an alt drag show. I was like, that's such a fun concept. I think that's hilarious. I would love to do that. I have like a really wild prompt. Oh my god, I have an itch like right here. Don't you hate when you have like a facial itch and if you try to scratch it, it just like irritates your makeup? I'm starting to get that like red look under my cheeks. Okay, black smudge, red smudge, and then purple um, blush right up on the last line. Which is why I feel like what she does is so interesting. I feel like what she does is so interesting because I would not have ne necessarily felt the need to layer both of those together. Oh my god, my face is incessantly itching. I'm so sorry. So red smudge, I'm going into this like really, really old um, palette. This is the All That palette from ColourPop. I think I'm going to go into Wink Wink or Silhouette. Let's go into Silhouette. It's a darker color. And she just does this all along the lower lash line. But she does like a thin layer. So I'm just going to stop here. Like she definitely, you can see the red, but it's not like a thick coat of red. And it's also not a bright red. It's more of a burgundy red. And then she does black. So taking the color lash line from the Glam palette. It's not a black, but it's like a really, really dark gray. Freckles, smudged deep lip tone. All right, she's just like zooming through this. I lost my freckle pen. I lost, I lost my, oh, no, that's lash glue. Yeah, guys, I think I lost my freckle pen. I'm really devastated actually because I really like my freckle pen. But I heard from the grapevine that you can use like a brow pen. Is that gonna work? I don't know. I'm trying really hard to like get this to blend in a very small way. But the problem with freckle pens is that like they do kind of end up looking just like my pores are big like they don't really look like freckles so much as they do look like issues with my skin okay so let's just assume that these freckles worked let's do the next layers so next is lilac blush right under the eyes this is the problem with letting my cat into this room is that her little butt her furs get all over the place so they put blush underneath the eyes and then an actual flushed blush all over the cheeks. And for flushed blush, I think I'm going to use Pom Pom from Benefit because it has that like burnt skin quality. The problem is Pom Pom is very pigmented and I'm scared that it's going to overpower the look. Okay, so just that grungy blush on the cheeks. She uses a brown lippy, but the brown lippy is like if a maroon and a red had a baby. So I took a brown and I'm taking this red lip cream from Sephora. This is number 94. I'm going to mix them together. And I'm doing it right on top of the lip color that I have now, which is, I mean, not a color. It's just like the lip oil from Hourglass. And I'm going to be pretty messy. I'm just going to like dab it on. And when I dab it, I'm going to do that thing that Sephora people do when they come in, but they're not really like makeup wearers, which is they like immediately apply lipstick and then wipe it off. And I'm like, first of all, why do you do that? And second of all, it like makes your lip line really messy. But in this instance, I feel like it works. I'm trying to like make my lips swollen and kind of like I've been kissing someone and I just don't even care you know I'm just like so I'm so wild and free I don't care about my lip color you know I'm just like a crazy person okay but when she does this it's like very casual and cute and then when I do it I look like I'm really done up all right let's do a little bit of another layer with this like grungy red in the middle however I do like this really smudgy blotted almost like blurry look I just don't appreciate how it's not brown. It's just red. So we're adding more brown in. This is Mahogany from Kaleidos. Do you see how actually this is a ton of work? Like looking like you don't give a shit is actually a ton of work. All right, now I've got a messy, smudgy, blotted, burgundy lip. It's a lot. I feel like definitely... Has there been spinach in my mouth this whole time and no one told me? Actually, it's broccoli, Rob, but still very offended. Blotting. Making sure that it's like completely worn away. And then applying a sheer gloss just in the center to give my lips that like natural pout. Also, this lip gloss that I love, it's like super messed up. This is the Too Faced lip gloss, but like look at my wand. What is <laughs> what is going on? Why is it like a scoop? But I love this color. It is clear, but I added some pigment into it, so it's more like a topaz color now. I think it's actually really great. Um, and I think this is essentially all she wanted us to do, but I'm going to add a little bit of smudgy black liner on the top because my eyelashes are nil and I need something. And um, I'm doing this in a literal grunge way, in the sense that like I'm using a pencil eyeliner that I haven't sharpened. It's super dull. I don't have any brushes. I'm just using my fingernails to kind of like perfect the look, but it really isn't that good. <laughs> you know, it's not a very good situation and I, I do appreciate that. Jesus, do you remember when I was crazy for thinking that I had hair on my face? Well, actually I had an entire clump of hair on my face and it was actually way worse than I thought it was gonna be. But anyway, for brows, um, she has like these impeccably grown out brows. I have 
on the opposite hand shave my brows because I like having a little bit more freedom so I'm gonna do a proper like a properly thinny thinned out grungy brow I know this is like not the aesthetic that she particularly wanted but I do think it's fine I'm just gonna like draw my brow out nice and thin I don't think it needs to be super dark I think it just needs to be done the interesting thing is I'm not even claiming that this is a good makeup look I'm just saying that I'm trying to try new things including an, what feels like to me like an unfinished look you know I, normally I feel like if I had eyebrows I would just like throw eyebrow gel in my brows and, and go because that's kind of the aesthetic that she was going for but I do feel like this is outside of my comfort zone you know what I mean she, had, she didn't even put on mascara this is like literally all she did she stopped at she didn't do base um I think because it was a real but she stopped here like this is a very messy undone look I feel a little bit like outside of my element because I don't feel polished I look a little bit irritated I look like I cried a little bit. Oh, she did one on crying, like looking good after you cried. And I felt like it was such an interesting concept because to me, I've never taken a picture of myself crying. Not once in my whole life. But I do know apparently that it's a very popular phenomenon is to like take pictures of yourself when you're crying because you're cute and swollen, I guess. Like you've got that like red look, like you're blushed, you're flushed. Um, you know, your eyes have that like watery look. So they're kind of like glistening. And it's really interesting that she did that because she pulls some of the most like interesting nuances out of different expressions that humans make or, or qualities of life that exist <laughs> and she turns them into these like artistic expressions or like things that you can achieve or you can you can um mimic the effect you can evoke the same feelings and i just feel like that's so poetic it's so romantic i love the idea of being able to do that and i also love the idea of like the kind of person who does these kinds of things like lauren may beauty did this video the other day um, not the other day, it was a long time ago, but she did this video called like dark academia or like light academia perfumes and I just thought that was like such a brilliant concept like to describe the kinds of things that you know people would like by vibe and not necessarily by what they usually associate with and I think that's an amazing concept because you know how sick are we of the literal outcome right like we all know how to do our own makeup or a lot of us know how to do our own makeup to the point where like it's not interesting anymore just to go off of like the look because we all have our looks um what's interesting now at this point is like going off of curation going off of vibes going off of you know more particular things that are novel and interesting and like maybe twisting a beauty standard in a way that is like not so easily achievable like i can easily replicate you know the, the kind of smoky eye or whatever that like people are seeing online and that's not very interesting but what is interesting is evoking a certain you know, watery-eyed look. I think that is a little bit harder to replicate. There's something about this, like, reddish under-eye that I find very compelling, especially when mixed in with a, a lilac blush, because, yeah, that is grungy. There's something about this that feels hopelessly cool. <laughs> I wouldn't do this on a regular basis. But that just goes to show that makeup, it, you know, every time I feel like I, I have a grasp on makeup, more things come out to surprise me. And I'm going to keep playing because I don't feel like I'm completely done. I'm actually going to go into Dolce Vita because I feel like the lilac blush that I put under my eyes was just a little bit too weak. So I'm going to use a touch of Dolce Vita. This is a purely liquid blush. It's a little bit tricky to use if I'm going to be completely honest. I don't love it for everyone. But I do think maybe we could get it to work under the eyes today. You want to be very, very gentle with how much you apply. And tap it like just in some areas. Okay, I think that is it. We're going to stop here. I am going to wrap up with a little bit of highlight just because I feel like my nose is getting a little bit lost in this. I just have a very, very small flat nose with like very few features. Um, so I'm going to highlight the bridge just to bring back a little bit of structural shape to my nose. I know that that's not part of the grunge look, but I do think that it provides a little bit more balance to my features in general just because I have such a flat face. Um, that's a personal thing. That's not on her. I don't really think that her features were the same. But I do feel like overall this is a cool look. I like the idea. I liked the novelty. I liked how, I don't know, almost casual it was to be able to try something new and to not fuss about looking perfect and to just sit down and have fun. And there's something interesting about that. So definitely check her Instagram page out. I'm going to link her um, again. Her IG is down here. It's Zoe Keneally. And I think she just does fantastic work. I would love to recreate more in the future. I just don't know it'd be interesting for us to go through it together because I know this is kind of a mess. I apologize if, um, you know, I didn't feel like I had my look prepared. I definitely didn't. This was not a very, like, deliberate creation. It was just that, like, I felt so inspired and so interested by this creator on the internet who's doing really, really 
specific niche things. So I'll give you a peek at the other ones that she's done. So Art of seducti Seduction, so she did The Ingenue, The Charmer, How to Look Like an Understated Academic, How to Look Like You're Cold, How to Look Like a Mediator, How to Look Like a rock star. And I was just like, that is so freaking amazing to do these like very, very specific looks that are niche um, and not necessarily to the traditional beauty standard, but you still look like you're cool. I don't know. I thought it was very interesting. I can't get enough of myself in the mirror. I feel like I look like a different person, but also like myself and a little bit cooler. So with that being said, I think that is everything. I loved hanging out with you guys today. I hope this was new and novel and interesting. I hope you give her page a look because she just does some incredible stuff. And um, yeah, I just am ceaselessly inspired and amazed by these like interesting artists who come up with really, really dynamic twists to everyday things and i just really appreciate it so with that being said guys i think that is everything from me today thank you so much for hanging out and i will see you on the next one very soon bye now